The decision in the case of Commonwealth versus Makan has drawn a huge amount of negative commentary. In Makan, the defendant was alleged to have made a series of obscene telephone calls to the victim. We can agree that this was a very wrong thing to do. But was it a crime? The court believed so. The court in Makan believed its precedents had established that whatever openly outrages decency and is injurious to public morals is a misdemeanor. There was no statute specifically forbidding obscene phone calls. The court drew upon its understanding of its inherent judicial power to define common law offenses in the same manner that the Crown's court had done so in England. Offenses such as murder, rape, and burglary had been defined in the first place by judges, and defendants convicted of these judge-made offenses were typically executed by hanging. Mahan got off easy, don't you think? The telephone wasn't exactly a novelty in 1955 when the Mahan case was decided. Consider a more contemporary example. The internet became a thing within living memory, for some of us at least. Social media arrived soon thereafter. Revenge posting of nude photos became a widespread problem only as recently as a decade ago. Surely, if a modern-day Mahan had posted nudes of his ex-lady friend on Reddit without her consent, the victim ought to have legal recourse. As indeed she would, in tort, for outrage. One who, by extreme or outrageous conduct, intentionally or recklessly causes severe emotional distress to another is subject to liability. Uh, might be judgment-proof. Anyway, surely anyone's posting revenge porn makes one wants to say, that's outrageous. Outrage is a common law tort. Why shouldn't revenge porn be punishable as a common law misdemeanor, especially in case the defendant is judgment proof? True, not everyone is on board with the idea of common law torts. The English reformer Jeremy Bentham was outraged by what he called dog law. When your dog does anything you want to break him off, you wait till he does it and then beat him for it. This is the way you make laws for your dog, and this is the way judges make law for you and me. Dog law is bad enough in tort. It's even worse in criminal court. They won't tell a man beforehand what it is he should not do. They won't so much as allow of his being told. They lie by till he has done something which they say he should not have done, and then they hang him for it. Critics of cases like Mahan also appeal to what is often called the legality principle. No crime without law. The principle is said to serve three important purposes. It serves to give citizens fair warning of what they are free to do without fear of criminal consequences. It constrains officials in the way they deal with members of the public. And finally, restricting punishment to violations of defined criminal offenses expresses respect for the prerogative of the legislature. This really ought to fall under a separate principle called legislative supremacy, unless we think it is obviously and always true that the legislature's draftsmanship gives fairer warning than a common law doctrine can. Would we be happier with the outcome in Mahan had the doctrine the court applied had previously been enacted by the state legislature as part of its criminal code? Or would we still be uneasy? <laughs>